Hey everybody, it's the Drive Cool Podcast. I'm Pastor Goodman, your host. My buddy Pastor Matt Richard is here. How you doing? Good to see you, Harrison. You too. Uh, what's what's new and exciting other than the uh, potential end of the world? Yeah. <laughs> well, I I, uh, I you know me, I do a lot of writing projects. So I finished another writing project last week. I mean, I got the draft done, which is kind of fun. That's huge. Big, big relief, and uh, so. Uh, maybe a little bit of a shameless self promotion in the book being done here to pass it along. And, and no, it, that's it, actually something that'll still be around in a week when this this news story is passed and the next one's right, coming. Right, right. So no, anyway, got that done, and uh, yeah, it's it's you know I also <laughs> in North Dakota I always there's two seasons. There's there's uh, road construction season and there's chapstick season, and uh, <laughs> it, it, it's. Uh, chapstick season it was 28 degrees here this morning and frost on the ground so i'm like yep it's officially here and we're, so we're ready yeah ready for winter yeah all right <laughs> so uh I, I woke up this morning and i made a mistake and i checked the news and i usually don't do that and and i remembered why um i, I want to talk to you today about uh wars and rumors of wars what does jesus say about this faster yeah I, I you know man i mean just anytime you know, we turn on the news, this, what's going on with Israel and everything else going on. I heard this morning, I was, you know, like, like yourself, I turn on the news and talking about the uh, brutal murder of, of little babies and uh, I won't go into detail, but just, it just makes a person want to hang their head. You know, you, you hear these wars and rumors of wars and you hear the atrocities. Um, I don't know about you, but I, I feel like I sometimes just want to go into my bed and just pull the covers over my head and tuck mm-hmm. my head down. Or, you know, maybe the, the whole metaphor of a turtle putting its head inside of its shell and just kind of pulling down. And and you just kind of, you, you pull within uh, when you hear about war and calamity and, and, and bloodshed and war. But what does Jesus say? He says, lift up your chin. Hmm. What, what right? like, 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 like bring it on or, or just sort of. Right, right, yeah. So we lift up our chin, right? You know, they bring it on, right? Uh, right, no, or, or is it something more? Yeah, it's something more. I, I would say that that anytime you hear these wars and rumors of wars, it reminds us of the very fact that this world that we live within is what the old uh, uh, the old Christians used to call the veil of tears, and I like that term. I, I really do. It's a veil of tears that we live within, which means that we live in a world that is infected by sin, uh, that has struggle and suffering and bloodshed and war. And this will continue to the very end of the age. And so there's no getting better. It's just, it is, it is what it is. As my son says, dad, it is what it is. And so yeah. this is, this is, this is how it is. And so when we hear this, it should not, number one, should not surprise us because this is how it is in this world. But then number two, when it does happen, it, it should remind us and uh, to the understanding it should remind us and give us that understanding that Jesus is coming back. He's going to make all things right. So with that knowledge, we lift up our chins and we say, you know what? It's really bad right now, but today could be the day that Jesus comes back and restores all things. Uh, we lift up our chins knowing our salvation draws near, that each day that we wake up is a day closer uh, to potentially being what? Called back by Jesus, where he would come back again and make all things right. And so we lift up our chins in hope um, with assurance that Christ is ascended on high and that again, he's coming back for us again. Yeah. So when, whenever we get wars and rumors of wars, like this is an Advent text for us uh, in, in the church. We talk about this with with the last great day, um, that, that we are in the, the end times until Jesus returns. Um, and we, we we sort of recognize that if, if there are wars and rumors of wars, it's, it's not a sign that things are falling apart, just a sign that the end is near. Um, but when we actually get to talk about it, your salvation draws near. Uh, that's not a far off thing. That means that we don't have to sort of escape the wars and rumors of wars, but where, where God's word is being preached, salvation draws near where where sinners are given uh the gift of, of holy baptism your salvation draws near like the the salvation that that's coming is not simply the last great day but it, it's the promise that god isn't going to abandon us to to all of the things that we're doing to each other in the meanwhile yeah yeah so back to the illustration when we hear wars and rumors of wars and we hear calamity and bloodshed and suffering and war uh, you know the tendency again is for us to put pull the covers up over our head yeah but i would actually say that the, that the healthy response is when that happens then we what we we run to Christ. We we yeah. we we cry out, Lord, have mercy on us. We hear the gospel. We make the sign of the cross. As bad as it's going to get, I remember who I belong to, and that even if that war is on another side of the sea, if that war were to actually be in our midst, it doesn't change the fact that I'm baptized. It doesn't change the fact that Jesus is still with me. It doesn't change the fact that Jesus is what going to come back for me again. And so we make that sign of the cross. We lift up our chin. Uh, 
not not in defiance to war. Uh, in fact, we would lower uh, our head with uh, yeah, Lord have mercy. Let's pray. We say, Lord have mercy. We see it and we say, God help us, um, us poor miserable sinners. But then in the midst of that sorrow and that suffering, we lift up our chin uh, to Jesus and knowing that all things are well in him. Absolutely. And that lets us sort of have that that broader picture that lets us lift up our heads. Because when when it's just all so oppressive, um, it, it gets to be our all in all. And, and the only thing Jesus really exists to do is get us through this particular conflict, this particular tragedy or calamity or whatever awful thing has taken up the news cycle. Um, if you can sort of recognize that that um, he who is making all things new, it doesn't just sort of promise a once if you fix it, but every day in your baptism, um, every day God God is at work to, to make all things new, to, to daily drown old Adam and daily raise up new man to to daily preach hope it, it lets you stare at this as if it is not the end of the world and and if it happens to be fine like i i know it's on the other side of it, it it's it's a boldness uh that, that doesn't just sort of dare to be on the winning team but dares to have hope even if you're on the losing one yeah you know and and, and i'm also reminded that uh what paul says uh to the christians in thessalonica i believe he says we you know we're talking about death itself he said you know we grieve but not as people who what have no hope and so I think I think we, we always have this tendency to go either or in all these things in life. It's you know either this or this. So either we pull the covers over our heads and we what uh, we, we 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 block the world out, or we run to that defiance where we say bring it on, right? And we, yeah, yeah. we, we lift up our chin. And it's not either or. It's it's admitting and acknowledging that this world is what a veil of tears, and at the same time, in spite of that, or. Um, Alongside of that, we lift up our chins at the simultaneously at the same time and say, my chin is up because Jesus um, does all things well. And that he, again, he's coming back and that I have salvation right now. Uh, as one old theologian said, we Christians, we already have one foot in the resurrection. Yeah. And so I just love how that's stated, that we already have one foot in the resurrection. And so we live uh, in anticipation. We live with hope. We live with assurance uh, as bad as it gets. And so whether it's a war today or a war tomorrow or the war the next day, or whether it's a war here in our homeland or a war across the sea, it doesn't change the fact of our fact of our Christian identity that we're baptized currently and that we have anticipation for the Christ who is going to make all things new. Right. And in that kind of hope, it, it, it has you looking up for Jesus. And and that lets you sort of confront the rest of the place Jesus goes with uh, wars and rumors of wars as he immediately turns and says, there will be many people who come in my name saying, I am he. Don't listen to them. Um, there's going to be a lot of people whenever these kinds of things that pop up that, that say your religion means and then it'll immediately get attached to something worldly. Or if you just do these things, you will be safe. And it's, it's always a law-based kind of thing um, and, and a tribal kind of thing. It lets us start to separate the wheat from the chaff when it when it comes to this. I remember back in the day, uh, we used to talk about, you know, we, we want to make sure that that we, we, we recognize the state of Israel and that that's good. But we're as Christians not tying it to a new salvation It is not tied to a rapture. Let's let's be easy on the book of Daniel and Revelation. But but even now, and uh, it, it, it really sort of seems like uh, the name of God is sort of uh, grabbed hold of by both political parties uh, to, to kind of say like, whatever side you're on, it, it's the side of the Lord and you, anybody else is on the wrong one. How do we lift up our eyes to sort of parse where to be looking, even as people are proposing solutions in the name of God that might not be real? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we have this tendency and, and unfortunately, anytime you have conflict, you, you try to look for a justification. And mm -hmm. so, you know, one side will, will say, well, we have God on our side. The other side will say, no, we have God on our side. And we're always looking at ways to justify um, our positions. And especially with war itself, we justify our actions. We, you know, a, a, a nation state will, will enact some sort of uh, attack, and then they want to justify that as if it's what justifiable. But the reality is, when it really comes down to at the root of war itself is sin itself. Yeah, yeah no, no doubt about. It. There's there, there's a just reason for war at times. Uh, what we call the just war theory, which would be a whole another segment. We perhaps we could talk about sometime. Yeah. But yeah, the just war theory. But in the in the essence of it, uh, really, when it comes to, to war itself, it's repentance. It's Lord have mercy. It's lamentations over the over the the calamity and the fallout of war, and it's also what uh, prayer, uh, praying for for peace. And then at the same time, again, it's 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 not to pull the covers over the head, but also to lift up the chin to Christ Almighty, knowing that in spite of how bad the war may be, Christ still reigns at the right hand of God the Father. 
I love it. And then you can be a little bit more honest about the details as you start to go through it. Both sides will have things that are right and things that are definitely wrong. And now you don't need to have the pure side. You need to have the forgiven side. And and you get to kind of lean into your vocation here and say, if you are a soldier, it, it, it's yours to go and, and and fight. If you are a citizen, it might be yours to pray for for those who are there, that that peace would reign, that that rulers would have cool heads that would prevail, uh, that that love of, of neighbor would would be uh, something that that all people would endeavor, that mercy workers would 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 have support and aid. But in it, all of it, you don't sort of have to have the perfect side. You can recognize there there's fault on both, and and so in, in all of it, you get to look for a God who who isn't simply picking the winning team, but is forgiving sinners on both and and dragging us along daily through the cross to the empty tomb. Yeah. And then ultimately lifting up our heads, um, knowing mm-hmm. that today may be the day that we meet Jesus mm-hmm. and that he makes all things right. And so it is, it, it's, it's a, a remorse over this veil of tears that we live in. Um, but realistically looking at it and at the same time, it's not an either or, but at the same time, yeah. then also lifting up our chance, holding on to Christ, the hope of Christ, the salvation we have currently right now, knowing that we are still in the here and now, but we also have one foot in the resurrection. Yeah, I got one more text we'll chew on just for a minute, and then I can let you go. But uh, uh, there, there's a place, and I'm blanking on exactly where in the scriptures, but our, our, our Lord says that there will be a time when the swords are beaten into plowshares, but it's not yet. Um, and it's not sort of a lamenting of of what could be, but but it's just simply today is a season for preaching, not a season yeah. for, for people who don't need it. And so if you happen to need preaching, like, let, let's focus on that, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, and that's that's the beauty of it. Uh, the, the 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 gospel goes forth uh, in times of peace, and it goes for, yeah, forth in times of war. It uh, goes and uh, goes out. I mean, well, this is what what Paul says to to young Timothy, I believe, right? Uh, preach the word in season and out of season, mm-hmm. when times are fable, when times are not. And so the message is Christ crucified and risen for you uh, in the midst of war, and it's also Christ is crucified and risen for you in the times of peace. Uh, it's Christ all the way through. And that's that's the calling of the, the Holy Christian Church is to deliver Christ and his gifts um, to to all people in the midst of all the different contexts, whether it's good or bad, upside down or left or right. Uh, it's Christ all the way through with our chins raised high. Amen. Come Lord Jesus. Come Lord Jesus. Amen. Pastor, thanks so much for your time. Sounds good. Good to see you, Harrison. Hey, you too. Bye-bye.